what we have here is sources we have source as an excel file or google sheet or a database we have seen sql server okay so this way we have seen multiple sources from all these sources we will be getting data to which component guys what is the component power bi desktop so inside power bi desktop what are the components we have first thing power query what, what it will do guys power query it will clean the data transform the data these two are the actions that we perform with the power query okay clean and transform data and next after that what we have seen is sources will be imported to power bi desktop here the first component is power query okay so this power query helpful to clean and transform our data after that what is the next component power pivot power pivot The so power pivot is meant for data view, building relationship. Yeah, data modeling basically. Data modeling. Okay, data modeling. Either uh, by creating relationships and also writing uh, DAX formulas, we'll be preparing our data for reporting purpose. Okay. So these two components we have completed so far. Discussing these two components. Okay. And now, now we are starting our discussions with Power View. So where we actually build our reports, guys. Where we actually build our reports, Power View. So Power View is meant for creating visualizations. Creating visualizations. On top of data that you have imported using power query and model using power pivot on top of the data we will be creating visuals here guys we will be creating visuals using power view so once we create these visuals we will so here what we do we will be importing importing our data to power bi desktop so once transforming and modeling and creating visuals we will deploy we will publish publish we'll publish our reports to power bi services power bi service there is one more component called power bi service Power BI service, which is on cloud, cloud in the sense which is accessible or internet to everyone. Whereas Power BI desktop available on local machines, guys. Everyone will be having your own copy of. Everyone will be having their own copy of Power BI desktop. But once they publish, our reports will be published to Power BI service cloud. This cloud service is called as Power BI service, and here we will have all the reports. Whatever report that we have created, Power BI report using Power View, that report will be published here, and those reports can be accessible to business analysts, data analysts. What they will do, guys? What these people will do? They will analyze data to get to, to create few insights. And insights will be helpful. Insights will be helpful for what, guys? For decision to, making. To make decisions. And what kind of decisions they make? They make decisions to improve their business. So these people will consume these reports. Or reverse way can not. Okay. We can consume. We'll consume. C 
see guys one single report uh, there there is a requirement in a project where 10 reports needs to be developed so we are having a team of two developers and each developer developing five five reports so by the end of week one each developer completed five reports development so totally how many reports we have developed Yes, we are having a project where we need to develop 10 reports and we are having a team of two developers and one developer can develop five reports in a week's time. After first week, like after one week, how many reports will be completed? Development of how many reports is completed? 10. 10. 10, right? Okay, good. So, so, so what they'll do, developer one and developer two, developer one and developer two will publish their reports to a common account common account in the sense we'll be having some gmail account right that will be identified with some username and password right yes we'll be operating our gmail accounts using some dedicated user id and password right yes sir yes sir Similar, right? we will be having a user account with Power BI service. That is our identification, like that is our identity. With Power BI service, we will be registering using our official company email ID. So with that, we will get one Power BI service cloud account. Okay. <clears throat> so dev one, developer one will publish using the same user account and developer two can publish reports using same user account. On the cloud, we will be having all the 10 reports shown in, available in, with one single Power BI service account. Whereas, on their local missions, on their local missions, developer 1 and developer 2 will be having their own copies of, what guys, their own copies of Power BI desktops, true or not? They will be having their own copy of their own copy of Power BI Desktop. This way. He is having his own copy of Power BI Desktop on this mission and he is developed first five reports. In similar way, this guy is also having Power BI Desktop available on his mission. And he's, he is having, he's, he has developed five reports. Okay. But end of the day, all these 10 reports belongs to one single project. So this developer one and developer two will publish all their reports to one single Power BI service account. Clear is developer one and developer two will publish one single user account. Is following me? Yes, sir. So this way, even though there are multiple developers working on a project, and they, though they are having their own copies of uh, Power BI Desktop used for developing reports, they will be publishing reports to one single user account on the Power BI Service Cloud, so that all the ten reports can be accessible through one single Power BI service cloud and to that particular account, the company related data analysts and business analysts will be collecting and they'll be consuming to draw consumptions of reports. Consumption of reports. And what they'll do finally, What they'll do, guys? Insights. Drawing. Insights. Decision making to improve business So, yes, these are the 
steps. These are the things that business analysts and data analysts will be doing. They'll be drawing insights, decision making to improve their business. Now clear guys, everyone clear about the architecture, how we deal with Power BI and how, where all individual Power BI components coming into picture. So far, we have learned about how to deal with Excel source, Google Sheet, database source, an example. After that, we know how to import and after importing using Power Query, how we will be able to transform and clean our data and using Power Pivot, how we can model our data and also we can write DAX functions. Okay. DAX functions to create measures. And after that, we are landing our learning on Power View component where we can create visuals, creating visuals. So far, we will have in Power Pivot, we'll have data in the format of data view, only rows and columns. Whereas in Power View, we'll be having graphical representation of data. What Power View contains, guys? Graphical representation of data. What is graphical representation, guys? Yes. Visualizations. Yes, visualizations. With a single look, with a single snap, we will be able to understand what's happening with the business. Okay, graphical representation of data. Clear, everyone? Clear about this architecture? This is Power BI architecture, yes, yeah. This is Power BI architecture. We, uh, though we have discussed this on multiple times, but I just wanted to make you people uh, go through it one more time so that uh, you will be uh, having clear thought like where we are right now. So we'll be uh, closing Power View discussion very uh, quickly, guys. It won't take much time for us. Okay, after that, we'll be discussing about Power BI service. After that, we'll be doing some uh, sample project and learning things. And after that, we will start preparing a scale and uh, go for attending interviews. That's the plan. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah, thank you. Say this. Um, Mm -hmm. We already have an orchestra diagram. So what is session? Uh, or, okay. Now, so far we have seen all the options which are available with different, different components. Like in the Power Query, we'll be having Power Query Editor as soon as we choose. Which option we have to choose while importing our source data to launch a Power Query Editor which option we have to choose and which window we have to choose that option. Transform data. Ah, in perfect. In which window we have to choose that option. Navigator. As soon as we yeah. click on source. Yeah, and now in the navigator window, we have to choose transform data option, which opens, which opens. Let's suppose I'm choosing this sample file. So here you can select, this is navigator window, where you can select a file or sheet of data, which in turn a table for you in the Power BI. By choosing that particular table, you can use transform data option, which will open you Power Query Editor, where you can perform all data cleansing and transformation operations. We have seen multiple operations, multiple uh, options available there. Okay. Can you please name few of them guys? Power Query operations. Or else I can run you through that one more time. Transform data. It is opening Power Query Editor. See guys, we'll be having two options, transform and add columns. Under transform, we'll be having transpose, reverse, counting, and the auto detection of our data types of the columns, column profiling basically detect data type, replacing values, filling values, unpivoting, moving columns 
to right and left, splitting, format options, lowercase, uppercase, string, prefix, extracting. Okay, all date related. See here, text on text columns, we are having these many options. On numeric, on number columns, we are having these many options. On any column, these are eligible, I mean applicable. Date columns, we are having these many options. Okay, I'm closing this window. I'm not uh, allowing to say. Okay, and you know, What is the next step? As soon as we transform our data, once we close uh, our transformation window, we will come to Power Pivot part, where our data will be shown and all the table information will be shown here. And as part of Power Pivot, we will be having model view, where a relation between our different different uh, models shown here. So by either by either through auto detection or manually, we can define. The relation between two models. Two models are nothing but basically two tables. You treat that way. Or else, all the tables which are related with some uh, relationships and entire structure is treated as a model, data model. Okay. So model view, data view, and this is report view, which is nothing but your power view. Clear so far, guys? Yes. Everyone clear? Yeah. Now try yes, to. Uh, go, yeah. Thank you. So try to go through the options we have uh, with Power View. See guys, in the Power View, we will be having... One second guys, give me a moment. Yeah, thank you guys. Okay. So we'll be having these three options first. Yes. Filters, visualizations and data. Filters, visualizations, and data. And we'll come reverse way. What is data view? Yes. Not data view, like what is data section? What it contains? Load it tables. It contains table information. Tables. And inside table, we'll be having column information. And inside those tables, we'll be also having new columns which are added through DAX functions or new measures we have added through DAX functions. We will be having all such information on the data section. Clear, guys? And we will be having visualization section where we will use different, different visuals to present our data in the form of visuals. See here, bar chart, column chart, clustered bar chart, clustered column chart. So this way we'll be having different, different visuals. And we are almost having more than 100 plus visuals available with Power BI, I guess. And see here, we are, we are not given with the full list of visuals here. Uh, three dotted lines are here. Once we click on this, we are having these many options. Either import a visual from a file, okay, or get more visuals. As soon as I click on get more visuals, we'll be loaded with the visuals which are available. The additional visuals, text filter, slicer, okay. This way, you'll be having different, different visuals. Okay. Now, we are having filter section, guys. So, filter section, we have seen filter visual earlier. In the example of uh, all function, we have used filter function, filter visual. Filter visual will be applicable to only some of the visuals that we use in a Canvas pane. This is canvas pane, guys, where we can draw our visuals. Whereas this filter, using this filter section, we can filter entire entire visuals, all the visuals which are available on the canvas pane or nothing but in our report. You will come to know this section uh, more in detail like in the next session or uh, in the upcoming session, yes. But for now, understand this filter section is useful to filter all the data to filter all the data available in this canvas pane. In this canvas pane, we, I used to call this one as canvas pane because here we'll, you will draw, your, you build, you drag and drop all your visuals. Now, here we'll be having by default page one displayed here in the canvas pane. Like that we can have within a single uh, Power Bay report, we can have multi multiple pages like this. You can add multiple pages. 
page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, like this. You can add multiple pages, and in each page, you can add any number of visuals based on your requirement. Clear, guys? So I'm removing unnecessary pages. So right now I'm on page one. Okay, no. So we will build a sample. I think we already have a sample data. Let me. Mm, we, when did we discuss about employee uh, department uh, discussion, guys? Which is with the filter function related, right? Related department name, right? Mm. Employee department. I'm loading them. See here, department is this thing and employee is this thing. Okay. And before that, what I'll do, I'll go to that file. I'll go to the file. Where is it? Okay. Let me. So I'll be right For BI, yeah. This filter function, okay. So, in the employee, I'll add gender. So I'll just add word like male. So I have added M or F to denote gender of an employee and department this much. Okay. Now I'll add salary. So thousand seven hundred five thousand. So this way I have added salary column as well. How many columns did I have here? Five. 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 Five columns and rows. Rows. Ten. 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 And department, how many departments are there? Three. Three columns, four. four rows. Four. Four, three columns and four rows. Okay. Employee and department. I'm going to Power BI. So here I'll import the same file, filter functions file. Inside this, I'll have employee and department data. I'm selecting employee and department data. I'm using load option instead of any transformation. As soon as I click on load, where where can I see my data, guys? Data pane section. Mm, data view or model view. And this is canvas pane, guys. Remember, canvas. This is called as canvas. Canvas. I'm going here to my data model, data view. So here, I will be able to see my data as part of tables here. Table department, table employee. Inside this department table, three column data. Inside table employee, I'm having five columns data this way. Okay. Now I'm going to visual visualization part. See here, guys, what I'll do? I'll select a table. I'll select a table. Before that, I'll go to model view to see whether relation is auto detected between employee and department table or not. Detected or not detected? I focus on relation, department detected. and department. Detected. Detected. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to power view. I have added a table. Simple yes. From the visualization section, you have to add a table. That's all. And to this table, what I'll do, I'll from the employee, I'll add employee name. From the department table, I'll add department name. I'm going to format your visual option. Format nothing but always remember it's a styling component, guys. 
also add to column headers at 25. So all 10 employees listed here. Now to the filter section, see here filter section, what I'll do, I'll take gender filter from employee table, I'll drag and drop here. See guys, what we are saying, see here read out here, filter on this page, whether filter needs to be applicable only on the page one or not, or filter needs to be applied on all pages. Guys, so I'll add page two, in the page two what I'll do, I'll select one more table, to this table what I'll do, I'll simply add department name and to this I'll add employee ID, nothing but, I'll sum up, see count of employee ID, nothing but, nothing but the number of employees assigned with single department, admin department having two employees, production three, purchase three, sales two, ten, total ten. Okay, now, clear this, do we have this kind of data available with us in our file, department wise employee count, no, Power BI, we using Power BI we will be able to generate such kind of insight or view very quickly, department wise employee count, I just drag and drop uh, department name from department table to this uh, table visual and I have drag and drop like uh, employee ID as a second column. While adding this employee ID to this table, what I am saying, count, see, use the count of employee ID for each department. What it will do? It will count. So, let's suppose one. For one employee ID, for employee one department ID, count number of employee IDs. How many? What is the count here? It will count. One, two. One. Two or uh, three, right? Count, three. I am asking. One, one, two, three. Count, you count all the ones, department ID ones. What is the count, guys? Three. 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 That's the meaning. And you count all the twos. Three. Three. You count uh, all the threes. Two. Two. You count all the fours. Two. 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 Same thing happening. See here. When I added this column employee ID to the table, here in the table uh, properties to the second column property in the second column property when you choose this arrow mark we will get options like whether you want to sum or count average minimum maximum like this we are having multiple options what what it's simply taking it is automatically intelligently taking only count considering uh, user is trying to look at the data department wise employee count so automatically it is treating this one as count but again use sum also. If I use sum, what happened? Value got changed. Admin is 12, it's saying. For admin, it is 12. Why? For admin, it is 12. Because employee ID I have used. So for admin, employee ID 1, what is the count? See, sum. Sum of these values. 15. 15. 15. That's what happening. Department 1, production having 15 as a count, production has 15 as a count. Getting my point guys? This way you can choose multiple options. But anyway, we'll discuss all these uh, options guys. But I'm just giving you the information like visualization section. In the visualization section, for any selected visual from your pane, you can format your data or you can configure your data such a way that your required visual is presented and using this formatting option you can style your visual increasing fonts applying background color uh, or uh, giving some flashy rows like that you can apply all the styling information using this format visual option so to get these options what you have to do simply select a visual in the canvas pane go to formatting options and explore all these options okay now what I'll do, I'll select this uh, table, I'll go to the columns with, of this visual and sum of, instead of sum of employee IDs, I'm using count. Now, it is correctly showing 10 employees data. Okay. Clear, guys? Guys, clear? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What else we have? Okay. Now, what I'll do here, I'll go and add. See, here, two options we have: filters on this page, filters on all pages. I'll to filter on this page. I'll add department name. I'm dragging down department name to filter on this page. Filter on all pages. To this, I'm dragging down. Dragging and dropping gender. See guys. So filter on this page. Like what is current page here? Page one. What is the name of page one? And page one containing what table? And the inside the table, what kind of data we have? Employee name and department. Employee name and department name. Okay. And page two. Page two contains what kind of data? Uh, as soon as I click on page two, are we seeing the filter which is applicable on this page, or are we seeing the filter which is applicable on all pages? See here, filter on this page is empty. Filter on all pages is having gender. Gender. I'm going to page one now. See the difference. We are having two filters. Filters on this page is department because I have drag and drop uh, department, and filter on all pages is Gender, C gender. Here department. Clear so far? I've just dragged and dropped the filters. One is page level and one is for all pages of the report. Clear? Yes. Now guys, I am in the filters on this page. I am selecting. See here, the values are populated automatically. Department name. What all are the distinct department names are there? All populated here. What I'll say, I'll simply select production. My visual got uh, filtered, guys. My yes, visual sir. data filter. Yes. This is filter. In page two, I will be unable to filter using department name because that filter is applicable for page one. While I am on page one, I have added department name as a filter on this page. So this filter on this page, which is added as a department name, that is not applicable for other pages. That's why in other pages, we will be unable to see that option. But we will be able to see filter on all pages option, which is created using gender. See guys, count is remaining 10. Whereas when we try to select only production, we are, we are seeing only three records data. But on page two, only production record needs to be highlighted and filtered, right? That is not happening. True or not? Because this filter is applicable to only this page, filter on this page. Clear? I'll deselect this. I'll select part. This. And when I go and see page two, it is having uh, it is having no impact on page two visual. It is having all the department wise employee count and total count as 10. No impact. It, the impact is only on page one, which is with the page level filter. It is report level filter. Filter on all pages, nothing but all pages will be termed as a report. So re report level filter we have to add in this section. Page level filter we have to add in this section. So I am deselecting them. All the employees and departments are selected. Clear so far? If you're clear, I'll move on to next one. Yeah. So now let me choose Sir? report level filter. Yeah, tell me. Can we use multiple columns for this? Sure, sure, we can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm coming to report level filter. Filters on all pages. I'm having employee and department name visual shown here. I'm having department wise employee count shown in page two. Now what I am doing, I'm trying to select report level filter saying only female F employees, I'm selecting female employees. As soon as I select female employee, I'm having four employees filtered across different different departments. And let's see, the I sell, I made selection in which page? I made a filter selection in which page? Page one. Page one. Page one. So my page one visual got updated. Let's go and see page two. What happened? Instead of 10, we are seeing only four employees. In page one, we are seeing four employees. And here we are seeing count as four. What happened here? Filter applied to all the pages. All the pages. Visuals available. Yeah. Mm. 
So we have added filter at report level on all pages. So if you apply this filter in any single page, that will be applicable to all visuals available in all pages of your Power BI report. I'm just giving you basic understanding about how filters works, the page level and report level. We will discuss about filter behavior in detail in upcoming sessions. Clear so far? Guys, clear? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I'll deselect female. I'll select female employee. In page two, I made this filter selection. I'm seeing six employees. Earlier in page one, how many employees were there when we selected uh, female employees? Four. 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 Now, what is the expected count? Six. How many records six. will be seen? Six. Perfect. We'll be seeing six employees. Because pay report level filter, we have selected male employee option and we are seeing that filter applied on your data. Clear this? Okay, I'm deselecting this. I'm just, see here, if you click on this crossbar, filter will be removed. That's all. From all pages, filters are removed. Now, see guys, Power View allows us to create powerful reports. See, our data is like this, very basic data, employee name, department ID, gender. I can, I can draw any kind of conclusion. See, I, I'll go here, I'll select a, see, for now, you, if you, even though you do not understand, don't worry. I'll select a bar graph. I just wanted to see which department consuming more salary. Instead of looking at the numbers, if I look at the bars, highest bar, like longest bar, which is the tallest bar, is the uh, highest consuming department. And the, the minimum bar, like uh, shortest bar, is lowest salary consuming department. This way I can, with a single look, I can understand, right? So what I'm doing, I'm just selecting department name and I'm selecting salary it will immediately do the aggregation production department wise total salary production number one let's suppose one 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 production department wise what is the salary it will aggregate and it will give twenty one thousand eight hundred as a bar see here as soon as i focus my mouse cursor on this production see here and the x bar you will be seeing department names and when i focus on this bar it is showing production 21,800 is a total sum of salary. And this is purchase 21,800. Admin 14,000. And sales 13,700. By looking at this bar, I can quickly tell, okay, production is the maximum salary consuming department in my company. Sales is a lesser salary consuming department in my company. So this way I can understand. True or not, guys? Are we having this kind of data available with our source data? No. No. Power BI allowing us, after importing our data, Power BI allowing us to view your data in different, different dimensions. This in the form of source, like in the source, you are having a plain view in the form of rows and columns. But Power View really giving power to your data. So such a way that you will be able to see your data in different, different dimensions. See here. I, I have told you to style your visual, select your visual, go to formatting option. In the formatting option, you will be having options like styling your bars. See here, columns, nothing but these columns. You can change the color. I'll change them to yellow. Okay. And spacing you want to see. I'll space. I'll, as soon as I increase space, bar width becoming smaller. I'm increasing this on surface so yes. And data labels, I'm turning off, the, turning on them. See label getting shown there. Inside, if I go data labels, and I'll be able to see uh, the position, inside and inside. And values, I can increase the sound, uh, sorry, size like this. And color, I can select some this way. And units, I don't want to see K, I want to see all the absolute values i'll say none display units none they're not getting shown maybe due to sorry data labels there is some problem what's the problem data labels 
points and values. Okay. I am saying thousands. Okay, 22,000, 22,000, 14, 14. And if you want to increase your x-axis levels, go to x-axis. In the x-axis, improve, increase your size. If you want to change the x-axis values, go to y-axis, sorry, y-axis values, go to y-axis. Okay. Uh, to go to value section and increase the font. This way. So this way, power view allows your data to be visualized in a powerful manner, such a way that with a single look, you can understand your business. See, I'm trying to add a bar chart instead of column chart. I have selected bar chart here and I'm adding gender and employee ID. Okay, I'm going to my formatting option to this visual. In the x-axis, what I'll do in the values, I'll increase. What happened? Data levels on values. They're not getting applied. Seems there is some setting issue. Not going on. Count of employee, correct. Say yes. By looking at this data, by looking at this visual, can you tell uh, which particular uh, uh, which particular uh, gender is having highest Male. Contribution Male. in the company. Male. How you are telling? Size of the bar. Six. Size of the bar. Length of Size. the bar. Length of the bar. Okay. So if let's suppose if there are only two categories, the male and female. So it is easy to uh, conclude something. But if you are having some 10 to 15 values, then a visualization like this allows you to identify which is the lengthiest bar and uh, that lengthiest bar belongs to which particular attribute and you can draw some decision. Do we have this kind of visualization available with your plain data here? No, right? It's a plain data, rows and columns. But on top of this data, power view allowing you to create powerful visuals so that you can draw conclusion or you can draw insights on your data quickly. Now, I want to see what is department-wise the salaries I'm paying. So I'm simply selecting department name from department table and the salary from employee table. See here, automatically based on salary, it is choosing some operation instead of count. When I used employee count, it was using count of the employee in this table. Page two, count of the employee was taken. If I select this visual, count of employee ID. In page one, when I try to, so I'll select this format and apply here. See here guys, department wise total salary is showing. See, this is graphical representation. This is tabular representation. Where values I can see like department name and salary. Whereas this is graphical representation which gives me singles inside okay, production and purchase of the costliest departments in terms of salary. And admin and sales are normal, I mean departments. I mean having lesser expenses in your company. Do we have this kind of data available with our, data, with our source data? No. We are having plain data. On top of plain data, Power View allowing us to create reports quickly. No need to write any formula. You simply drag and drop uh, whatever columns and values that you want to look at. And based on that, Power BI intelligently gives you the output. Clear, yes? Guys, clear? Yes, guys, following me. Now, I'll show you one more beautiful concept here. So I'm having four visuals. Now tell me guys, can anyone tell me like what kind of visuals I have, that I have drawn here so far? First is employee and department names. And second one is department-wise salaries bar and gender-wise employee count 
and department wise total salaries. For how many visuals I have uh, drawn here in the canvas pane? Four. 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 Now, carefully observe this. As soon as I select the male lengthy bar, like here, the male bar in this visual, if I select this, what happens to other visuals? Just notice. I'm selecting this. What happened? Yes. Whatever. Those Join got filtered. Those got filtered. Other, yeah, other, perfect. Other visuals also getting affected. As soon as I select male employee column bar here, all other visuals filtering their data to provide male related information like an admin department, male related salary is 14,000, production 15,800 and total salary is 45,100. And this is a portion of your male employee salaries. See here at the highlighted portion. The grayed out portion, see, see, by looking at this chart with this filter, what you can say, what is the value of sales department? None. What is the salary spent on? Perfect, none. Nothing. Okay. It is grayed Zero. out completely. It means, what does it mean? The other way? There is sales no department no. having no male employee. No. Yes. Sa yeah. Sales department having no make And see here in the table. Yeah, in the table, are we seeing the sales department and having uh, zero value? No, it got rolled out completely. It, it got removed completely from the table. But whereas in the visual, graphical visual, it is still there. But it got grayed out, saying no portion is applicable to the male you have selected here. And in the employee name and department, it's showing all male employees six. No, to come back to your normal position, come to the same visual, you click side, sideways and your complete visual came. Now, what I'll do, in this visual I have selected earlier. Now I'll come here, I'll select production bar here. What happened guys? I've selected production bar, automatically this portion, uh, male, two, female, one, only three employees and production salary is 21,800. Perfect. What is happening here? As, as, as soon as I select production bar in one of the visual, rest of the visuals are filtering their data with respect to production department and they are showing. Clear? Yes, sir. Yes, clear? Yes. What is happening here? The visuals, multiple visuals which we have drawn on the canvas pane are communicating among them or other way, they are interacting with each one of them. They are interact. They are having interactions between them. Getting the point? They are interacting with other visuals. One visual, you do, you perform any action, one of the visual, it is interacting with other visuals and uh, respective visuals are getting filtered and showing the results. Clear guys, remember this word, very, very important word, interaction. Visuals are interacting with each other with respect to the data. Clear with this word? As soon as I select any visual, I'll be having two additional menus added. What are those? See here. What are those? I'll select sideways. I'll select visual. Now see. Format. And data, data drill. Data slash drill. Okay. Just have understanding, like have an idea. Like when you select a visual, you will get two more menu options. Inside that, you will be having different, different options. Data drill. And inside format, we are having edit interaction option. Okay. Clear, guys? This way, using visualization section, what are the visuals available there? Using those visuals, you can bind your source data which is imported and you can create your visuals as per your needs. And those visuals will be drawn in the canvas pane. And one single Power BI report, Power BI report can contain multi-page. And we can have page level filter or a report level filter which is applicable to all pages. We can drag and drop any column data here on this filter pane. And 
any of the visual data can interact with other visual data and it is evident if i select female bar a female employee bar here it is having its female related data reflecting in all other visuals clear so here we are going to learn about this piece which is called power view creating visuals graphical representation of our data see guys this is graphical representation of our data okay we will learn all the things like what all are all possible options available with power view in next sessions clear everyone yes sir i suggest i recommend everyone to create all these four visuals using the data which i am going to upload today guys uh one more uh, serious um, serious note uh serious note in the sense in terms of a training part uh, make sure you people having your hands involved on daily basis with whatever sessions that we are conducting like we are doing on daily basis yes. we are noticing market is getting required slowly at least with respect to power bi and reporting data analytics side not in the not with the regular conventional programming language like like python and java but with respect to data analytics like with the tools like power bi and sql we are seeing a gradual growth in the market okay we are seeing few openings okay companies are started publishing openings information in the market you people spend your time you people you are spending your valuable time one hour here i am also spending my personal time here one hour time so end of the day we have to make our uh, spent time fruitful okay i want to see you people uh, procure like good careers at data analytics side with good packages okay with a long term secure career that's the only intention so from now onwards start involving your hands with the practice okay and also make sure if everyone uh, if anyone not having uh, any sql knowledge please make sure you continue your sql sessions okay thank you guys meet you sure. in the session